Lauren from Hardware Heaven and today I'm doing a review of the Powercolor HD 787E Mist Edition graphics card. So this is my first ever graphics card review and because of it I'm going to be relying quite heavily on the written review of this card that's already on the Hardware Heaven website and I'll put a link to that in the description below for any of you who are interested. Um, but this is a new card, it comes in at a great price point and in this video I'm going to be comparing it to the popular GTX 660 Ti. So let's get started. Before I take you for a look at the card itself, I wanted to cover something quite important. Now, even though this is a 7870, it's not actually a 7870. Basically, 7870s use a Picarin GPU, um, and 7950s use a Tahiti GPU, and this 7870 actually uses a light edition Tahiti GPU. Um, so, architecture-wise, it's actually a 790-something, rather than a 7870, um, as it can't crossfire with other 7870s, but it can crossfire with 7950s and above. Um, so AMD have made this quite confusing, so really it should have been called like a 7910 or a 7930 or something. But this 7870 has 2GB of memory and it has a PCS Plus cooler. In the box you get a quick installation guide, a driver disc, a display port to mini display port and the graphics card. Looking at the Powercolor HD 7870, it's got a stealthy black cooler and a black PCB. Um, and this card has three large copper heat pipes which travel through the GPU to both sides of the card. And this card intakes air for a large 92mm fan and it exhausts a fair bit of air out the back of your case but the rest of it in your case. So then just looking at the display outputs, we've got um, DVI, HDMI and dual mini display ports. Now obviously this card supports IPMT for multi-monitor gaming. Um, looking at the power, it takes two 6-pin PCIe connectors and also has a single crossfire connector. Now remember this card will only crossfire with other Tahiti cards, so you'll either need another light edition Tahiti 7870 or a 7950 or a higher. Overall, I do think the power colour have done a really good job of how this card looks, and I think that other manufacturers should take note of the black PCB. As an individual reviewer, it's quite difficult to review a graphics card for the first time, and one of the main reasons being is that it does take some time to gather up benchmark results to be able to put the performance of the card that you're reviewing into perspective. And as this is my first ever graphics card review, instead of using my own benchmark results, I am going to be using the extensive results found in the full written review. Um, so starting with the 3D Mark 11 results, you can see that Power Colors Mist Edition HD 7870 does outperform a standard 7870, but um, isn't anywhere near as good as a 7950. This card also outperforms the popular 660 Ti, which is actually £40 more expensive, so this card is looking pretty impressive so far. Moving on to Far Cry 3, you can see the card's performance in a real-world gaming test, and this 7870 um, outperforms the 660 Ti by a couple of frames per second. And then moving on to Assassin's Creed 3, this Mist 7870 actually outperforms the 660 Ti by an average of 20 frames per second. Um, but if you do go for a 660 Ti instead, it means you do get to enable Nvidia's new TXAA anti-aliasing, which is something that I haven't had a chance to play with yet, but it does look really epic. Moving on to multi-monitor gaming, here is the results of Skyrim running in 5760 by 1080 um, and as long as multi-sample anti-aliasing isn't enabled for obvious reasons, um, Power Colors Mist Edition HD 7870 does do really great across three monitors and once again outperforms the 660 Ti. So then lastly, this card's default clocks is 975MHz for the GPU clock and 1500MHz for the memory. Now, in the written review, Stu actually did manage to overclock the GPU clock to 1090MHz and the memory clock to 1635MHz. Um, unfortunately, I could only achieve 1435MHz for the GPU clock and 1565MHz for the memory clock, um, and that was in my workstation PC. And I did find that if I tried to increase it more than that, I did start to see artifacts even with the power control slider up to plus 20 percent um but i do think that's mainly down to the fact that my rig does need some serious tlc but it's not uncommon for a tahiti light edition based 7870 to far exceed a 100 megahertz boost to both the gpu and memory clocks so, concluding my thoughts on the Powercolor HD 7870E Miss Edition graphics card, I have to say I am really impressed. I've had it in my workstation PC for a little while now and found that it's completely round rings around my old GTX 580. The card is a little bit louder than I preferred and I would have liked to, for them to have used a dual fan cooler rather than a single one. Um, I do really like the look of this graphics card, but I did find it seems to kind of sag more so in the PCIe slot than some of my other heavier graphics cards. And my guess would be that the metal shroud, um, the fact they haven't used a backplate to reinforce it, 
it is what's causing it. I mean, it's not like massively noticeable, but I just thought I'd mention it. Uh, moving on to the performance, I have to say I was really surprised to find out this card is less than £200, um, given its performance test, and that is the reason why, in its full written review, it has received the value award. Um, and I do think it deserves it, but this card does perform better than the GTX 660 Ti, which does seem to be the popular card for people making new gaming rigs. Um, so I think that if you are looking to get a new graphics card and you don't quite need or can't quite afford a 670 or a 7950, then I definitely recommend considering getting this card. Um, but that was my review for the Power Color HD 787E Miss Edition graphics card. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe for more hardware and gaming content, and thanks for watching.